Hi, Kinkas here. Welcome to the build video for the Agogo Full Kit by Jolin Lab. Simply put, the Agogo is a bank of 8 Vectral based low pass gates with some clever normalizations. The jacks on the left are inputs, in the middle are the CV inputs, and on the right are the outputs. The inputs flow from top to bottom so that a signal plugged into the first input gets buffered and sent to the second input and so on. This flow is interrupted whenever a cable is plugged into any input. The CV inputs work the same way, except for some latency due to the chained Vactrols. This way you can open all of the gates with a single voltage source plugged into the first input, and the outputs get summed from one channel to the next, so you can get a mix of all 8 channels from the last output. This mixing scheme also gets interrupted each time a cable is inserted into an output, so you can use it for example as 2 4 channel mixers, 8 individual LPGs, or any other combination you can think of. The 8 LPGs are set up as 4 grooves with 2 different LPG flavors. The top row of each pair being a lighter flavor and the bottom one being a little bit heavier. And there are headers on the back which allow you to chain any number of agogos together, yielding a saturated output in the end of the mix chain. The kit comes in a very eco-friendly package and includes everything you need to build the module, including the 8 Vactrols, the panel and the PCB with nearly all of the SMD components pre-soldered. 24 jacks and their nuts, the surface mounted electrolytic caps and the headers for power and chaining, as well as the film capacitors and LEDs. Now, the manual is very intelligently written with the perfect logical order of steps and even includes an interactive bomb. But me? Oh, I didn't follow the manual. Just to show you folks how much harder it is to build it with the wrong order. You're supposed to start with the SMD parts, which are the electrolytic caps, followed by the headers. But I soldered on the film caps first. Then I plugged in the Vactrols. The shorter leg on the LED side of each Vactrol goes into the square pad on the PCB. Only then did I solder on the electrolytic caps, which was much more difficult with the Vactrols and film caps already on the board. Still, I was able to do it by tinning one pad for each cap, holding the cap in place with tweezers, making sure they match the shape drawn on the PCB, then reflowing the tinned pad and finally soldering the remaining pads. That wasn't too bad. But then came the surface mounted headers, and these gave me quite a headache due to their proximity to the larger through hole components. It took quite a bit of fiddling to get them on, and they ended up a bit crooked and burnt. Next I turned the board around and soldered on all of the Vactrols. Once those were on and the leads were trimmed, I proceeded to snap on the jacks and install the LEDs, minding their polarity, again the short legs into the square pads. But before soldering I fitted on the panel and tightened the nuts to make sure everything lined up. Then I pushed the LEDs up against the back of the panel and soldered everything up. For this part I had to extend my iron tip as it was very easy to burn the film caps and Vactrol casings with the fat part of the iron. Clip off the leads. Tighten the nuts. I used some shrink tubing on my pliers so I don't hurt the panel. And that was it. The power socket is a single row. After checking it for shorts, you can plug in the power cable using either row and making sure the red line on the cable lines up with the thick white line drawn on the PCB. Red stripe goes down. I hope you learned from my mistake here. Always read the manual and follow it carefully. I would have had a cleaner and faster build had I been less anxious and taken the time to check the manual out. That's it, just plug it in to test and have fun. Stay tuned for the demo video coming up next. See you soon and stay noisy.